أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله
should be where it's due and uh, these events are just supernal and beautiful Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa subhanallah al-Hayyya al-Azim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen الذي أنعم علينا بنعمة الإسلام والذي منا علينا بنور اليقين الحمد لله على كل شيء الحمد لله على ما قدر وعلى ما على ما قدر والحمد لله على ما قدم وأخر اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على الحبيب المصطفى النعمة المجزاة خاتم الرسل والأنبياء أجمعين سيد الخلق أجمعين النبي الأمي الأمين المرسل رحمة للعالمين وعلى آله وعلى آله وعلى آل البيت أصحاب النطفة الزكية والنور الإلهي المتنقل من جيل إلى جيل بركة وهدى يا أهل البيت بركة وهدى أفضل الصلاة والتسليم عليكم وعلى أصحابه المختارين وعلى من اتبعه بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم يا رب كم نبتهد إليك وكم ندعوك ونتوسل إليك قائلين كما قال رسولك النبي الأمين محمد عليه الصلاة والسلام أفضل الصلاة والتسليم أن تصلح لنا ديننا الذي هو عصمة أمرنا وأن تصلح لنا دنيانا التي فيها معاشنا وأن تصلح لنا آخرتنا التي فيها معادنا 
وأن تجعل الحياة زيادة لنا في كل خير وأن تجعل الموت راحة لنا من كل شر يا رب العالمين One of the enduring images, one of the enduring images in the Quran is in Surah Al Jumu'ah when Allah describes a people who inherit the word of God. They inherit the linguistic practices of a thing. But substantively, they are entirely removed from the meanings of the words that they are supposed to have inherited. And in Surah Al-Jumu'ah, Allah describes it, such people as if donkeys carrying books. Donkeys carrying books. Because one of the most powerful vain temptations One of the most powerful, vain temptations is to assume that just because you have inherited a linguistic practice, just because you have inherited a phraseology, a system of phrases, a system of words just because you have inherited a system of meanings and values that just because you inherited that in, in fact you are in any way an authentic representative of what you've inherited Allah alerts us that so often, so often, so, so often, symbolized here by books, but so often the bearers of knowledge, the bearers of norms, the bearers of the message, the bearers of the guidance that was once given, the bearers of the, mem of the memory of a prophet or prophets, the bearers of the memory of Ali bayt the bearers of the memory of the Prophet Ali Sallallahu so often the bearers, those who bear, without realizing it, they are indeed like donkeys carrying books. Their state is such that just because they engage in the symbolism of the thing, just because their mommy, their daddy, or sheikh such and such, or Islamic organization such and such, or whatever the concern or entity might be, treats them as if in fact they embody and represent the substance 
of what is in these books. Just because of the outer appearance, because they seem to be the inheritors of knowledge, the inheritors of meaning, the inheritors of value. Just because these people might actually be, feel proud of themselves, might actually feel tempted, or might actually be tempted to feel that they are knowledgeable, or that they are ethical, or that they are good Muslims, or that they are people of God, or that they are the bearers of the light. They might be tempted by all of that. But in reality, in reality, they are no more than donkeys carrying books. These books have seized, or you could say, the system of meaning, the epistemological universe, the system of moral norms that they are supposed to embody as inheritors of the thing actually is no longer effective or meaningful to them and then so they have become donkeys carrying books but remember that in Surah Al-Jum'ah it is clear that what God says is generalizable to any people to any people who do fail to embody the substance of the moral message but specifically and explicitly God is talking about the example of the Israelites who at one point were the bearers of the message of monotheism, the bearers of a rebellion against slavery and oppression, who at one point represented the rise of the persecuted against the persecutor, who at one point we do have the living embody in the living embodiment of how injustice and oppression cannot be tolerated. But the Quran is telling us that through the years, those people. became committed to rituals that no longer mean anything, became committed to an ideology of exclusivity and selectivity and entitlement. They became committed to the notion of historical promises, even if their belief in the historical promise leads to the extermination of tribes and peoples. As we read in the Bible, in fact, did happen. And God tells them, don't you dare think that you are the bearers of something real. You are but donkeys carrying books. Two prongs here. 
two aspects to this khutbah that are equally important. Because we see in our day so many Israelites in fact embody that metaphor of being donkeys carrying books. And at the same time, we see so many Muslims embody the same metaphor. Donkeys carrying books. Let's be very clear and open about things. Since I stood at this podium last, since I gave my last khutbah, I have come under the most vicious and virulent attack by Zionist extremists in the United States and all over. I have even stopped counting the number of publications that are talking about the UCLA law professor who is an anti-Semite and the concerted, deliberate effort that I have been the subject of, to, to or the subject of this past week or so, the deliberate effort to get me fired from my university. If not get me fired, to stain my reputation as a raving, insane, anti-Semite, a Jew hater. Of course, when you are saying, when you say about a professor of international law and international professor of international human rights, that they are nothing but a Jew hater, the implication is clear is that they are not in any way driven by the very nature of the evidence before them. But they are driven by a pathological hatred that doesn't respond to reason and doesn't respond to evidence. It is just an irrational, unjustified, inexplicable, like all prejudice and all bigotry is, unjustified and inexplicable hatred for the Jewish people. That the Jewish people are doing nothing wrong. They are just defending themselves. And while they are just minding their own business, defending themselves, exercising the most natural right that a human being can have, and that is the right to self-defense, that yours truly and people like me acting upon this blind pathological hatred accuse the state of Israel and the Israeli military and the entire system of Israeli production of violence, accuse this entire system of 
evil when no evil in fact exists. So yeah, all of those who hear this khutbah should know that there is a very concerted effort to malign me, to defame me, and to get me fired from my university. Threats of pulling donations, threats of ceasing to donate. But it is not just threats to the school that employs me. And although I've educated in the school generations of law students, including generations of Jewish law students who have gone on to have brilliant careers worthy of their Jewish identity and worthy of the Jewish tradition. Although I've educated generations and although I defy them to find a single Jewish student in all the years of teaching. I defy them, defy them to find a single Jewish student who will say Khalid al Fadl was unfair to me or marginalized me or did not give my opinions and points of view a fair chance and opportunity. They will not. They, they might invent a student, but if we are talking about playing fair, they will not find such a student. But this brings us back to something really critical. They are livid because they know that I've touched upon a truth that my fellow Muslims, with all their rhetoric and all their conduct as donkeys carrying books, Donkeys carrying books are not threatening to anyone. After all, they're just donkeys. They might think that they're intelligent, but the outsider knows that these donkeys actually don't understand anything and don't know anything. And so what triggered them, and after doing everything possible for so many years, to ignore my existence. Once upon a time, when I was a presidential appointee, the Zionist organizations were extremely concerned. But I will never forget, after Bush left office, how Daniel Pipes wrote an article bragging that Khaled al Fadl used to be an important person, but we have succeeded in isolating him and marginalizing him. And he now is no, is no more, or he now is nothing more than just an imam giving khutbahs. In other words, he is no longer any threat or any concern because he no, is no longer, he does not or he does not any longer represent 
prestige and legitimacy within society. And the saddest thing is while Daniel Pipes wrote this, of course, gleefully about what he thinks to the extent, to the extent that the Canary Project had removed me completely. They have all these professors as enemies of Israel, but completely removed me, as if to say he is no longer relevant, no longer of any significance. But what is really sad and tragic is that Pipes had a point. But my marginality didn't come from the fact that Pipes and company have convinced, has managed to convince the powers that be in the White House or in Congress or in the federal government not to deal with Khalid Abu Fadl, not to meet with Khalid Abu Fadl, not to hire Khalid Abu Fadl. He was right for a very different reason. And a far more tragic and disgusting reason. He was right because of the ignorance of Muslims themselves. Muslims who are truly donkeys carrying books. Those who marginalized me were not the Zionist organizations. Those who marginalized me were my fellow Muslims. My fellow Muslims. And they didn't marginalize me because they disliked, disliked what I said about Israel and the consistent and systematic record of human rights abuses committed by the state of Israel against a people under occupation. No, they didn't marginalize me because of that. My fellow Muslims marginalize me because they are donkeys carrying books, because they don't read, because their relationship to the books on their bookshelves it's just that, for sure. And when these Muslims encounter some type of beast of burden that actually understands the books, instead of just carrying them, my fellow Muslims are stumped. And my fellow Muslims marginalize whoever represents anything beyond this, the, sta the status of a donkey carrying books. So while Diet Pipes was gloating about how I had become irrelevant, But if Pipes was honest, he should have thought, he should have thanked Muslims for that. And said, thank you Muslims for being donkeys carrying books who will speculate about how Khalid Abu Fadl is a Shia. Who will speculate about how Khalid Abu Fadl is a liberal. Who will speculate about how Khalid Abu Fadl is a Mu'tazili who will speculate about all of that and then, and as a result, will pretend that the voice of Khalid Abu Fad does not at all exist. 
Have you seen a more idiotic group of people than us? Let's go back to the reaction after I've given khutbah after khutbah after khutbah about Palestine and about Jerusalem. And after the Zionist organizations did their very best to try to ignore my existence and to say secretly, bravo, Muslims, bravo for believing whatever garbage we spew about this guy. And you Muslims have no brain, no intellect, no integrity. So whatever garbage we spew, we know that you will pick up. And yet you will eat up. We know you Muslims. We know you, that you destroy whoever is in your fold. Who is something more than a donkey carrying books. If there is a Muslim that is actually a thinker, who actually opens these books, reads these books, thinks about these books, i.e. a Muslim, something more than a donkey carrying books, we know that you Muslims will marginalize this person and put him on a far, far removed and forgotten shelf and just pretend they do not exist. We know you Muslims. We can rape your woman. We can murder your children. We can create rape camps in Bosnia. We can exterminate Muslims by the millions from the Rohingyas. We can continue empowering and encouraging China as they, as they commit an actual Holocaust against the Uyghur Muslims. We can do all of that. But the minute we spread a rumor that Khalid Abu Fadl or even perhaps not a rumor. The Khalid Abu Fadl doesn't particularly think much about what the, the so-called obligation of women carrying, women covering their hair. That all it takes is for us to disseminate a little story about how Khalid Abu Fadl doesn't think much of the hijab then this is all you poor donkeys carrying books need to exterminate the best among you, the most intelligent among you, the most educated among you. And I'm not being arrogant in saying it because it is true. People, many people, Many people, many Muslims, who meet the standard of professional competence, i.e. through difficult universities, legitimate degrees, serious intellectual production. This man before you, won an award that has never been won by a religious practicing Muslim, not before and not since, the Oslo Human Rights Award. The Oslo Human Rights Awards have gone to plenty of secular, godless people. The few Muslims that it has ever been given to were thoroughly secular. Muslims, yours truly was the only Muslim 
who is a believing and practicing Muslim, who was awarded the Oslo Human Rights Awards, and do you know who expressed concern and anxiety and fear? Yes, the Daniel Pipes of the world. And do you know the reaction of my fellow Muslims? Not even a congratulations. They did everything to pretend it never was. The Hamza Yusufs of the world, all your little imams in Bayan and in and, and Zaytuna and what's the, what's the name of the other word? Bayan? Jihad Turk? No, no, Jihad Turk's organization. Yeah. Yeah. Bayan and Zaytuna, not a word. I am the only believing, practicing Muslim to have won to have been honored by the American Academy of Religion. The American Academy of Religion is the organization for true scholars that work on religion. And for that academy to honor a Muslim for his contribution to religious thought in our modern world, do you think that there are Muslims who congratulated me? Do you think I received email after email from my fellow Muslims saying, Mabruk, brother? No! No! Think again! It is as if Khalid al winning that award which you are selected for. You don't do anything to apply for it, obviously. Never was. Again, the Daniel Pipes people became worried and concerned and agitated. But as I said before, sweethearts, why bother yourself? Why are you so worried? You don't know how useless we are as donkeys carrying books. If only you knew, not even a single Muslim even Muslims that i known all my life, like the people from the Islamic Center of Southern California, like the people from MPAT, like the people that was raised by Maher Hakul, Allah Yerhamu Hassan Ali, who I consider to be a second father, not a single one of them said congratulations or MashaAllah, or we're proud of you. So now, listen. Where are the, where are the letters of threat? Hold me up. They're in the plastic sleeves. Yeah. Where? Plastic sleeves. Yes. So here, yeah. some of what I've been receiving that I will share with you, so we can all enjoy. Some guy writes about how this is disgusting that this is what legal education has come to is to have a professor like myself at UCLA and he says about me that I have that I spew vile and racist rants that 
teach hatred and bias against Jews. Another guy, is even a little bit more colorful. So he wrote, what are you? Who are you? Why are you so sick? It's not about me. What are you? Who are you? Why are you so sick? Do you have a family? How would you like your family members to be tied to a tree and raped from the front and back. Little bit of sexual fantasizing. Raped from the front and back. How would you like babies in your family to be placed in kitchen ovens at 450 degrees? How would you like to watch your family members be dismembered while you sit and watch? You can take your twisted, sick ideology and shove it. You can take your progressive law protection at UCLA and think you're safe. Well, you're not. Going after Hindus and Jews, whoa, you're a tough guy. Anytime you want to meet at Jan's, Jan's Steps, to have a discussion, you let me know. Best, JD. But this is not even the choice one for me. A man that I have known for 30 years. A man that at one time I hoped to educate about Islam and to receive education from about Judaism. A man who at one, a long time ago, I used to sit in his Talmud class to teach about the moral lessons and moral anchor of the Talmudic tradition. The man is Chaim Seilfelder, man that I've known for 30 years, the head of Hillel at UCLA. A very influential man, not because he has any academic post of substance, but because the synagogue that he ministers from and the religious establishment that he controls has the ear of so many influential people at UCLA. And this man who has known me for 30 years, who I used to consider a friend, wrote me a very sweet and short message. Your recent fulminations are nothing less than the disgraceful rants of a raging lunatic. What a shame. You have not now joined the ranks of those who are committed to fomenting hatred and divisiveness. Well, that gives the impression that Chaim Seilfelder, my old former friend, I guess, and the guy who's talking about raping my family from behind and front, and the many other messages that I've received, and the many messages that the law school received, and the many messages that the administration at UCLA received, it gives the impression that they are not donkeys carrying books, but that they actually represent substantive thing. And what are they upset about? Well, they are upset about, how dare you say that Israel is creating a road map for the fanatic Indian government, the racist fanatic Indian government. How dare you say 
that they are creating a roadmap for how to commit ethnic cleansing and how to commit a genocide against a people and get away with it. How dare you say that it is the Indian authorities themselves who have repeatedly praised and supported Israel for the lessons taught as to what they should implement and how they should implement things in Kashmir. And the implication is that I am just a donkey carrying books. Let's sample. Heretz. No, sorry. Let's sample. And I'm going to provide links to all, to all these articles so you can. The Asian Times. And I'm just going to read headlines. Just a sample. Indians join Israel's war on Gaza. Scores of immigrated members serve the IDF to fight terror against Hamas. And the article, of course, goes on to explain why Indians are so excited about Israel's war against, quote unquote, Hamas, but it's really against the Palestinian people. Other article, India's Hindu nationalists are using the Israel-Hamas war to their advantage. This one is from an Indian publication. Another article from the Jerusalem Post itself, Chaim. Chaim, do you read the Jerusalem Post? Do you know Hebrew? Have you learned Hebrew, Chaim? The Jerusalem Post itself, over 200 Indian B'nai Menash, meaning Indian Jews, join the IDF's fight against Hamas. Another article from India Today, why people from India are armed and ready in Israel to fight Hamas, giving great detail from India Today. Another article from World News, Israel is an awe of influential Israel is an awe of influential power India, thankful for Indians volunteering to fight Hamas. Another article, Modi's lesson from Israel. Modi's lesson from Israel. Demolish Muslim homes and erase their history. And this is from Al Jazeera. Another article, Report on India's impunity in Kashmir reveals Israel connection. Another article. India's impunity in Kashmir, surveillance, counterinsurgency, and the politics of fear. Another article. Israel-Palestine war. Why Hindu nationalists are backing Israel against Hamas. Another article. Enlist us, enlist us to fight Gaza jihadis, Hindu extremists urge Israel. This is from the Middle East Monitor. Enlist us. They go, and this is well documented by human rights organizations, that they go and they sign up to volunteer to join the Israeli military so they can have the pleasure of murdering Muslims. Another article. India bars protests that support the Palestinians. Analysts say a, a pro-Israel shift helps at home. Another article. This one is from New Delhi News about how 
Indian mercenaries who joined the Israeli army were killed and their bodies retrieved. Another article, Indian origin soldier killed in gunfight with Hamas in Gaza Strip. Another article, this one from the Washington Post by Rana Ayub. India's ruling party is using the israel Gaza war to demonize Muslims. Another article by The Diplomat. India's digital footprint on the israel Gaza war, pro-Israel content including disinformation, is being widely shared on social media by Indian nationals, more significantly by right-wing Hindu nationalists. Article after article after article discusses the obvious. Israel loves to claim that they have the most moral, ethical army in the world. This is like donkeys carrying books. Because if this is the most moral, ethical army in the world, then ethics and morality mean nothing whatsoever. This is an army that bombs indiscriminately. This is an army that targets medical workers and ambulances. This is an army that shoots people point blank and prevents anyone from coming to their aid until they bleed out and die. This is an army that has been caught time and time and time and time again arresting people and shooting them as they are handcuffed and blindfolded. This is an army where there are tons of testimony of families saying our fathers, our children, our brothers were executed before our eyes. Let's take, let's take a few images in. What do you want to show? This is a picture. Can you show it to the camera? This is a picture of the Hindu, one of the Hindu, first Hindu military units that has a horrible human rights record that fights with the Israeli army and is responsible for numerous atrocities committed against Palestinians, including rape and murder of children. Show them the image of the Indian soldiers in the bed. These are Indian soldiers who are laughing and joking after murdering Palestinian children laying in their bed, laughing about the blankets and comforts, comforters that these poor Palestinian children used to enjoy. And the Israeli, and the Israeli army knows fully well about the atrocities committed by the Hindu extremists. But they do not care. The video of the woman talking about the massacre of her family. Numerous videos like this, where mothers and grandmothers testify, as you can see, men that were clearly executed, killed execution style. Even a child in this film killed execution style. And the mothers or grandmothers or sometimes female neighbors testify how these men were gathered and killed right before their families. And what is the response of the great moralists in the Israeli army? What is the response of Chaim Saad Felder? 
What is their response? Don't believe the Palestinians. They do it to themselves. You it could it could be all an act. They're just pretending to have died, and they're setting up Israel by saying the Israelis killed these people in front of us. And as soon as the camera goes away, these people will spring up and play soccer and enjoy a cold drink. But if these people actually look dead to you, really dead, and they're not going to get up, and they're not going to play soccer, and they're not going to enjoy a cold drink, well, you know, these are terrorists that were killed in combat. And we know these Palestinians, they lie and lie and lie. Because that's what Muslims do. That is what Arabs do. That is what colonized people do. That is what subaltern people do. That is what indigenous annihilated populations do. They always lie and lie and lie to frame their colonizer, to frame their oppressor. Don't you dare believe a Palestinian when a Palestinian tells you about their own suffering because a Palestinian can never be believed because a Palestinian is always a liar, born a liar, will live a liar, and die a liar. And guess what? For all of you who will continue to threaten me, and continue to try to get me fired. This is precisely what the Zionists said about their Jewish victims as they exterminated them. Jews are liars. That's what the, that's what the Nazis said. Jews are conniving. That's what the Nazis said. Jews hurt themselves by themselves. They kill themselves, we don't kill them. They exterminate themselves, we don't exterminate them. Don't believe Jewish propaganda. It's all a lie when they tell you that we're being exterminated in mass and killed in mass. And that's precisely what the Israelis say about the Palestinians. And that is precisely why the Israelis are indistinguishable. from the Nazis who are responsible for the Holocaust. But these people are such donkeys carrying books. The Netanyahu's of the world the Ben Gavir of the world, they actually believe, believe the lie about their own morality. So they get, what did they get particularly upset about? They got upset that I said, that Israel is using pornography as an instrument of war against Palestinians. That Israel has learned that a steady dose of pornography weakens the Iman and the faith of Palestinian people and makes them less than eager to resist occupation and to stand against oppression. And they said, how dare you? We are the Israeli moral ethical army. Evie, porn is a, we a weapon used in psychological warf warfare. Here is the proof. And it discusses how Israel is using porn as an instrument of warfare against the Palestinians. The Sydney Morning Herald 
porn run on seized TV channels. What they're referring to is that Israel went into Ramallah, seized Palestinian television channels, television cha stations, and instead of these stations broadcasting what they used to broadcast, news and things like that, these channels now broadcast pornography. But these people don't care whether it's true or not true. They know that this is easily verifiable. But they're like donkeys carrying books. The truth doesn't concern them. It is all about image. It is all about posturing. Medium. A very detailed article. Pornographic weaponization against the Palestinians by Israel. A very detailed study about how Israel uses pornography as a weapon against Palestinians. If you want, you can bother to actually get an education instead of being donkey staring books. Try for once to actually read the book. This book by Michael Jones. Sexual Liberation and Political Control. Michael Jones. This is back in 1996. Starts out the book with a detailed discussion as to how Israel has turned pornography into an instrument of war against Palestinians. Michael Jones is not an anti-Semite and I even don't think he cares much about Palestinian, Israeli, whatever. So go ahead. Go ahead. It's like that sweet pretty lady who, her name is escaping me for the millionth time. Nicole Jeans. Huh? Nicole Jeans. Nicole Jeans. It's like that, that sweet Nicole, pretty lady Nicole Jeans said, you can't threaten someone. You can't threaten someone who's not scared to die. So go ahead. Threaten. Do what you want. Try to shut this voice up. Make my day. Go ahead. Who I fear is Allah. But there's another thing you should know about me. I don't care what anyone thinks of me, including all Muslims. So you can go ahead and malign me with Muslims all you want. You can go ahead and invent whatever information you can invent about me. You can go ahead and engineer whatever scandal your heart desires. As long, as long as I know what the nature of my relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, I do not care if every Muslim on the face of this earth hates Khalid al -Fad. Means nothing to me. So go ahead. Take your best shot. You are criminals. You have no ethics. You have no morality. You are donkeys carrying books. Sadly, sadly, just like most of my fellow Muslims.
سبحان الله العلي العظيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على محمد خاتب الأنبياء خاتب الأنبياء وأشرف الرسل أجمعين وعلى آله الأطهار الميامين وعلى صحبه المختارين وعلى من اتبعه بإحسان إلى يوم الدين Isn't it profound? Doesn't it speak volumes? That it is South Africa who brought the case before the International Court of Justice. Bringing a case like this costs money. South Africa doesn't sit on billions of dollars like Saudi or the Emirates. But they spent money out of their own pockets. And the International Court of Justice in its typically typically constrained, let's be, put, use a polite word, political language, said yes, there is a plausible case here that a genocide is being committed Yes, and Israel should stop immediately. And of course, Israel said, screw you. Because Israel is supported by the United States, which also says, screw you. And all the countries that pretend to be the country of countries of moral books, countries who, who are in reality nothing more than donkeys carrying books, feigned a very weak display of concern. We have presented for now piles of evidence before Wahid Khan, the prosecutor of the International Criminal Court, the same man who couldn't indict Putin fast enough, has been doing absolutely nothing, writing a shameful, embarrassing, idiotic op-ed, publishing it in London, that left all international lawyers puzzled. What the heck is this man saying? And as a result, lawyers of every ilk and kind, international, the most prominent and distinguished international law professors, signed a letter telling the prosecutor of the International Criminal Court. You are derelict in your duties. You have breached your obligations and you must promptly resign. But you know, I love to complete pictures, to present things in their totality. You see, you want to understand so much about the world we live in. Here is the open letter, by the way, which we will provide a link to. Open letter to the Assembly of State Parties regarding the International Criminal Court's Office of the Prosecutor's engagement with the situation in Palestine in which all the prominent, distinguished professors of international law and international human rights, who I am sure that the Chaim Seinfelder of the P of the world will say, they're all just uh, anti-Semites. All these distinguished professors, who in fact played a critical role in educating the world about the evils of the Holocaust. Now, 
join in a, this letter saying the International Criminal Court has failed so miserably in its duties after compelling evidence has been presented to it time and time and time and time again of war crimes committed by Israel. And Wahid Khan, who cares about his political career in Britain, more than anything else, is sitting on his ass doing nothing. And I do not apologize for using words like ass anymore because I do not care what Muslims think anymore. You want to pretend to be polite as women are raped and killed and murdered? Go ahead. I am done with pretending. I am done with your theatrics. I am done with your little theater displays. As all of this is dying, going on, what does the dear United Arab Emirates do? Do they help South Africa bring Israel to accountability? Do they use their substantial wealth to punish Israel for the genocide they're committing? Do they do anything that is remotely helpful to their fellow Muslims? No! They hire American mercenaries, and we will provide the link to that article. To do what? To kill Yemenis. All US, America, dear, we know it's embarrassing for you to go around killing, committing extrajudicial killings. You know that it's against international law to just murder people, execute them without trial or due process. So you sit on the side. We will hire American mercenaries, ex-military, to do all the killing for you. And then on top of that, the Hamza Yusufs of the world and the Zayn Shakers of the world who publishes a little cartoon saying a Muslim shouldn't mock them as a Muslim. Do you hear a peep from them about what, the, the, the disgusting immorality of Yemen? No. Do you hear a peep from them about the disgusting immorality of Saudi Arabia that just opened the first bar in the Holy Land. No, of course not. Do you ever, is there a chance that you will ever find the Canary Project or any of the Zionist organizations targeting Hamza Yusuf or James Shaker or any of these people? Of course not! But let me tell you how it goes with people like me. I built my career alone with Allah's aid. No Muslim ever helped me. I went through school, earned scholarships, Fellowships paid by non-Muslims. My education was paid for by the kuffar. Kuffar who are better than you Muslims. My law degree, my PhD, my, even my undergraduate degree was by Jewish donors and atheist donors and donors of all types, but the not Muslim donors. None of my education was supported by Muslim money. And even now, even now, as I come under attack, and as these organizations seek to get me fired, and as these organizations threaten my family, where are Muslims? Nowhere to be seen. 
Do you think Muslims are saying, brother, just tell us how much can we donate to support you, to back you up? Absolutely not. Muslims. Once upon a time, a man called Safi Qureshi in California came, talked the big talk. I am a wealthy Muslim who donated millions to the University of Irvine, who gave Bayan, I don't know what, who gave the Islamic Center, I don't know what. Look at me, I'm a wealthy Muslim. Kiss up to me. Praise me. Treat me like a king. And at the end, supported us with nothing. Zilch. Zero. In Columbus, Jawad Shah, I am so fed up. I am calling everyone by name. Oh, you've been carrying the burden for so long, it's time that you let us carry it with you, brother. MashaAllah, what do you want, Jawad? Give me your library. Well, yes, give me your library and I'll support you, brother. No, you can't have my library, Joab. Not a dime of support! Not a penny! So, Daniel Pipes, Canary Project, all you guys who have been writing tons of articles against yours truly, be happy, rejoice! I stand alone with my God because my fellow Muslims do not exist and do not help and do not support. My fellow Muslims are only interested in whether I am a Mu'tazili, I am a Shi'i, I am a liberal. The full truth. Shahadati li Allah, my testimony, my witnessing before God. Khalas, I don't know if I'm going to be alive next week or the week after or the year after. I don't know how long, but I can tell it's the end is near. I know that the end is near and there is no more time for lies and theater and for donkeys carrying books. It is more honorable that you just be donkeys. It is more honorable that you put the books aside and just admit we are donkeys. And pray like donkeys. Meh. Oh no, that's, that's not donkeys. Pray like donkeys. Put the books aside. Zid Shaker. Hamza Yusuf, Bin Bayya, you all pretenders. All the wealthy Muslims who have let, not Khalid al Fadl, but generations of people like Khalid al Fadl perish alone, unsupported, without help. The little players in the Islamic Center of Southern California, the dentist, the guy who owns a sports store who go around pretending, oh, we are Muslim scholars. We were trained by my hatut. Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah. You are donkeys carrying books. Set aside the books and just be donkeys for God's sake. This is my testimony before God. May Allah forgive me and forgive you, and especially forgive those of us who is on the erroneous way, fi tariq al-dulal. And may Allah bless of those of us who is on the tariq al-huda. Allahumma khfil lana. Allahumma afu anna. Allahumma arhamna. Allahumma tub alayna. 
اللهم اهدنا لأقرب من هذا رشدا يا علي عظيم يا رب Allah forgive our sins Allah forgive us for being donkeys carrying books Allah at least inspire in us the strength to put the books aside and just be donkeys Ya Rab If there is no hope that we are actually going to read these books that we will actually be intelligent that we will actually be something useful to this world then at least ya rab give us the strength to put the books aside and just be donkeys wa salli wa sallim wa barik ala muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa aqim as-salah